flying with only your hands is an order of magnitude more difficult than flying with cardboard. I could just fly a step at first, then a couple of steps. It was weeks before I could make it across a room, and then only with a loss of altitude. The telephone book paper glider is best for hand flying, but it's harder to adjust, especially in humid weather. You might find adjusting easier if you put the two gliders back together to even out the force as you bend the elevators of the thinner paper. When adjusted right, the telephone book paper gliders have an amazing slow glide. Because the wave created with hands is much smaller than that created with cardboard, you have to stay in exactly the right place relative to the glider. If you slip behind the elevator, the wave actually lifts the back of the glider up, sending it into a dive and speeding it up. Now drive it down, get behind it. There you go. Getting ahead of the glider is even worse. If your wave gets ahead of the center of gravity, it lifts the front of the glider up. That stalls and slows the glider, so we get even further ahead, causing the glider to stall more in a vicious cycle. So you have to stay locked on exactly the right place and instantly micro-adjust. It'll be easier to see where your hands are relative to the glider if you keep the glider above your head. That means launching from as high over your head as you can reach. Have your other hand right up there ready to start levitating before the glider can lose much altitude. It's very common for people to have their pinkies stick out a little from the rest of their fingers. But if you can remember to close the gap, you will make a little bit more powerful wave. It's so hard to remember that during flying that we've actually tried taping the pinky to the next finger. Having a friend launch up high for you might allow you to concentrate on flying. You'll have to experiment with hand position. You can keep them straight up, or you can tilt them in. Oh, it's very sensitive. I find it's easier to have a gap in between the hands. If my hands touch, the glider tries to veer left or right. I made the instructions to get people in the air with the least hassle, but as you become familiar with the two-for-one, there are a few things you might want to experiment with for more efficient flying. On most airplanes and gliders, a tail section stabilizes the wings. However, on a free flight, flying wing design such as the two-for-one to have any flying stability, you need two things that help stabilize, but do not help lift. Weight in the front and up elevator, which is also called reflex, in the back. The weight and reflex kill some lift, but it's the price you have to pay for stable flight. But there might be some room for minimizing the weight and reflex. You can experiment with lowering the reflex a tiny bit and correspondingly cut a little weight off the front. But at some point it'll become unstable. Then you'll have to back off, raise the elevator for a little, and add some weight. You might have seen my students flying bigger gliders than in the instructions. Maybe by printing out the GIF pattern instead of the PDF pattern, 
you can use your computer to change the scale. The only limit to making them bigger is the rigidity of the paper. The drier the air, the bigger you can go. Be aware that as the glider gets bigger, you might have to experiment to find the center of gravity. The location on the pattern might only work for that particular size. You might also have noticed on the videos that some of the gliders have a longer straw boom in the front than in the instructions. Making the straw boom longer can reduce the total amount of weight needed for the front of the glider because of leverage. Let me illustrate. So here's a ruler with some coins sticking out over the edge of a table. If we move the coins farther outward, it eventually reaches the tipping point. We didn't add any more weight. We just moved the weight farther out on the lever. If you make the straw boom longer, it'll only weigh less if you can keep it rigid without making it very wide. As things get longer, they get flimsier. Making it much wider would make it heavy, so I bend the straw lengthwise. You can see why with a piece of paper. A long strip of paper is flimsy, but fold it lengthwise and it gains a lot of rigidity. Be aware that when you have a long boom, adding or subtracting little bits of weight at the tip will have a greater adjusting effect than before because of leverage. One-handed gliding is experimental hotshot stuff. With a perfectly adjusted glider, in dry weather, in dead calm air, on a good day, I can barely keep the glider going. It's hard to fly it straight. I'm experimenting with different finger positions to flatten the top of my hand. When you get close to the limits of flight like this, every bit of weight matters. If you can adjust the glider very well, and are flying in dead calm, it's possible to cut off the vertical stabilizers and then cut some weight off the front to rebalance the center of gravity. If you can control the glider without stabilizers, shedding that weight might be what you need to fly at the extremes. I never said flying with your hands would be easy. Only a few students at my school can fly with their hands, and it took time. Practice was frustrating and we progressed in small steps. But that's real life. We have to work hard for things that are worthwhile. Surfing on a wave of air is worthwhile. It's like magic. As you grapple with building, adjusting, flying, and creating innovations, stay in touch. Hearing of other people's success is encouraging, and it's what keeps me going. Hearing constructive criticism helps me make better quality revisions. It's always exciting to hear when people come up with new ideas. A good way to feed back into the walk-along community is to make a video response. And assuming you already know how to upload a video on YouTube, it only takes a couple of seconds to make it a video response. Wee. What? <laughs>